All right. Thank you all for coming so much. It is fabulous to be back here in Seattle. I actually saw the mountain on the way in, so I took that as a really good omen. Didn't see it at all the last time I was here. So first of all, congratulations on possessing one of the most complicated programs known to the human race. <laughs> But thankfully, in this class, throughout these next four days that I'm so thrilled to be spending with you, we are going to be looking at uh, practical ways to use this, use this program. We're going to learn the truth about resolution, file formats, resizing, all those questions that we were talking about during the, the pre-banter a part of this uh, session this morning. And we're just going to have a lot of fun with it. You will find that I'm not going to teach you anything that you're gonna, not going to use just about every day. We're going to focus on practical, non-destructive, updated methods of creating time and true techniques in Photoshop. So, but before we get started, I have a little bit of housekeeping to do. I am excited to announce the launch here in Seattle of a whole brand new identity for myself. I'm now transitioning to Photo Lisa. So I, I was the graphic reporter for a long time. So I've rebranded everything as Photo Lisa. So we've got photolisa.com is my website where you'll find oodles and gobs of tutorials on Photoshop and all kinds of other pieces of software. They're totally free. You got a step one screenshot, step two screenshot. So no matter your skill level, you absolutely can follow along with those. And if you want to send me any emails, my email address is lisa at photolisa.com. And remember, that is Lisa with an E, like it sounds, Lisa. <laughs> and if you want to follow me on Twitter, you can do so. I'm at photolisa on Twitter. And on Facebook, I now have a fan page, too, and it is facebook.com slash photolisa. And if you go there, there's some nice little freebies that you can download. I've got two-page cheat sheets for Photoshop CS5, as well as Elements in iPhoto. If you want to take advantage of that, just click the like button on that fan page and you'll get download links for that. So that's fun. And this is the new logo that um, I had made. My good friends Richard and Tanya Horry, who are colors for DC Comics, brought that little logo to life. So that's a lot of fun. All right, and as Craig said, I wrote a big honking book on Photoshop. It's called Photoshop CS5, The Missing Manual. Nearly 900 pages in the book, five additional appendices that you can download online because O'Reilly said, look, we're not killing any more trees, basically. <laughs> Also, I'm the co-author of iPhoto 11, The Missing Manual. That one came out the, earlier this year. And if you want to pick up either one of those books, if you're one of the few who won't win one during all the wonderful contests that we've got going on for this class, then you can get a 40% discount off the print version and a 50% discount off of the ebook by purchasing it directly from O'Reilly's website. So you need to go to O'Reilly.com and then at the checkout, process, you would enter a special super secret code, which isn't going to be secret anymore. It's A-U-T-H-D, so auth D is the code that will give you that discount. Also, if you have not yet planned your family vacation, I'd love for you guys to take a vacation with me. My husband and I are going to be uh, enjoying a river cruise on the Danube. We're going to start in Budapest in Hungary, and we're going to end up in Prague in the Czech Republic, and I'm going to be teaching three classes on board the boat, how to take better pictures no matter what camera you have, uh, image editing with Photoshop and iPhoto and Lightroom, mm. and then we're going to put theory into practice. We're going to take two photo walks, so I'll be guiding you on shore. I don't, I don't know which towns we're going to do the guided photo walks yet, but we'll put theory into practice with that, and I'll actually take you around these towns and show you what to shoot, give you some ideas. And then last but not least, when we have all taken some great pictures, then the last class on the ship is going to be how to share your photos with the rest of the world in the great interwebs and how to get those photos into your projects and create stuff with them. So if you're interested in that, trot on over to Photo Cruise with Lisa. Dot com and you can find out more information about that. There is time to sign up uh, for this cruise. There's still a few spots left, so I hope to see you there. Also, I'm the chief evangelist for iStockphoto.com, which is just a fabulous resource for royalty-free imagery, 
flash components, illustrations, movies, any kind of multimedia audio that you could ever have a need for. What I love about this site is it's all royalty free. So that means you buy the item once and you can use it in as many promotional uses as you want. You don't have to keep purchasing it or keep paying a fee every time you want to use that file. So I really love it. And I always tell photographers that it's really useful because let's say you've shot a wedding. Okay, and you want to make some creative pieces that you can sell to your clients. Well, you might take a, a, a romantic photo and fade it into a bed of roses. Okay, that will give you an additional product. Well, you may not have that shot of the bed of roses, so that's a great usage for stock photography companies like iStockPhoto.com. And let me tell you, uh, there's millions and millions of images on this site, contributors based all over the world, and if a bed of roses isn't the appropriate shot, you can still find whatever shot is appropriate for, <laughs> for the collage that you want to make. And collages is um, one of the things that we're going to be covering in this class, so everybody will learn how to do that. And it is a heck of a lot of fun. And if you're interested in purchasing some iStock Photo uh, credits, that's the way it works, you purchase credits and then you download images from that bank of credits, then take advantage of Creative Live's special page because you're going to get a nice 20% uh, discount on credit purchases. So that URL is iStockPhoto.com slash creativelive.php. And all of this is in this uh, introductory slideshow as a PDF in your exercise files. So you've got all this information. All right, now let's spend a little bit of time in Photoshop. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take a little workspace tour, okay? And then we're gonna pop back in here and we're gonna learn a little bit about resolution and file formats. So let's go ahead and get started in Photoshop. And the keyboard shortcuts that I'm using are gonna be showing up on screen and I will tell you those shortcuts as well, but if you wanna capture them, just watch the screen up there too. All right, here we are in Photoshop, and I thought I would start with a picture of the outside because none of y'all are going to be seeing that all week long because y'all are going to be in here with me all indoors. So see, there's the mountain, and that nice? It's out. Yeah, you won't see it again. <laughs> okay, a few things of importance to note in the workspace here that will just help you as you, you know, move around within Photoshop. You'll notice that uh, my Photoshop environment takes over my whole screen. However, if I click and drag on this top gray bar here, click and hold down my mouse button and drag around, see how my whole Photoshop world moves? That's because I have the application frame turned on. The application frame came along in CS4 and you either loved it or hated it quite honestly. I hated it when I first started using it, now I absolutely love it. So let me show you how to turn that off and on and you'll see the difference between using that. Uh, I use two monitors when I'm at home in my studio. I have my laptop plugged into a large external monitor, so it is helpful for me to be able to shove this whole Photoshop environment to that second monitor to get it the heck out of the way. Okay, so you can access that by going up to the window menu and near the bottom, here's the application frame option. Okay, so it has a little check mark on it right now, which means it is turned on, it's activated. But if I give that a single click, see how now the view changed. I can see through to my desktop uh, beside the window. I could have a bunch of different Photoshop windows open and I would be able to move them around individually. So uh, with this kind of view, if I click back to my desktop, Photoshop gets temporarily hidden. Okay, so that is another option for you. Yes, we have a question. Is that, is that for Mac or Apple only versus PC? No, great question. Is it for Macs or PCs only? No, it's cross-platform. Because we don't have that selection. Oh, you don't have that selection? Oh, well then I take back what I said, and it's obviously just for Max. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and turn my application frame back on. So I'm gonna go back up to the window menu and choose application frame. There we go. Now, it takes over my screen uh, a little bit again, but I can move it around if I want. Now, if I open up more images, they're gonna show up as tabs within, the, within this environment, which I find to be quite useful. <laughs> 